clinical advice for this age group in particular. And joining us to talk about Alzheimer's disease and also ageing population here in the UAE, and happy to take your questions, Dr Ahmed Foul. He's a geriatrician from the Rashid Hospital, Dubai. Doctor, I can safely say you're the first geriatrician I have ever met. Oh, met, I met I'm lucky. <laughs> many a paediatrician. <laughs> what is the age range that you specialise in? Yeah, usually the the geriatrics age is considered of that age of 60 because of this is the age of retirement. However, uh, we call the patient is geriatric when he starts to become dependent on other people to take care of him. So it's not necessarily an age, it's more to do with health and requirements and no. quality of life? No, okay. age is not a factor. Interesting. And, yeah. Now, why are you so passionate about this area of medicine, doctor? Uh, in fact, I'm attracted to areas of um, uh, knowledge from uh, different specialities. Like I, I, uh, in, in geriatrics, there is cardiology, there is neurology, there is psychiatry, there is orthopedics, there is um, uh, all systems of the body are included. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, w- this attracts me because I like to know knowledge from every. Um, everywhere. So no, no day is the same. Yeah. But that's an interesting point that you must be working with people with all sorts of different issues as you're talking about, you know, whether it's psychology or urology, um, you know, bone health. Yeah. So we are taking questions on that, but our focus really today is about Alzheimer's. Yeah. Um, do you feel like this group is often overlooked, um, ignored when it comes to health concerns? We, we cannot say ignored. We can say the, the appropriate way of management does not reach to everybody mm-hmm. because still the community are not aware about the presence of geriatrician and the role of geriatricians in, in, in management of all people. Uh, simply, geriatrics is a, a, a branch of medicine who, who, which is concerned about improving the functional status of the, pe- of the person. What does, what does that functionality yeah. mean to you as a doctor? Yeah, functionality means that I would like the patient, my patient to be independent on any other person except himself. Like mm. he can go uh, toilet by himself, he can bathe himself, he can eat by himself. This means independent. So we measure the functionality if he can take transport, if he can transfer, if he can go to the supermarket and buy what he needs. This is my concern. I would like my patient to be independent. And there are many factors or many diseases can interfere with this uh, state of function. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, if the patient is Parkinsonian, he cannot walk safely to the supermarket. If he's depressed, he's not willing to go to the supermarket. And if he cannot see properly, if he cannot listen properly, if he has osteoarthritis of the knee. So many factors can lead to the same problem. That's why we need, uh, geriatricians need to know all the systems of the body Mm -hmm. of the person and uh, try to identify what are the problems which make this person independent and then prioritize which is the main problem and which is the secondary and and so forth. Mm -hmm. And then work on solving his problems one by one, starting by the most important. This is simply geriatrics. Compared to the medical doctor or the internal medicine, internal medicine are concerned with disease. Like, for example, if a person have a chest infection, the, the, the chest the physician treats his yeah, chest. Pres- prescribe and treat it. Whereas yeah, we you, also do this. Of course, if that's one of the, one of the issues that they're facing. Yeah. But it sounds like you're looking at quality of life, for yes. want of a better phrase. Yes, in, in, in addition to treating his chest infection, me as a geriatrician, I need to take the patient out of the bed and observe his gait mm-hmm. and his ability to go to the toilet by himself. And if the patient in the same time, I discovered that he is Parkinson's many, many times, we, we, we discovered patient not diagnosed before as a Parkinsonian, patient who cannot, despite they have chest infection, they cannot walk because they has osteoarthritis. And one patient, I will give you an example, very, very nice example. One, one lady was in hospital for a few, not long period, but she was diagnosed as demented because she's not talking to anybody. And she referred to us. I go to talk to her. She talked to me nicely. I say, OK, uh, can you come out? She said, I cannot see. So I checked her eye. She has cataract, bilateral and very dense. But she still can see light. We, we referred her to hospital to do cataract extraction. And after that, she become very active. And she said, I have husband here in the hospital with me, was admitted in the same time. And her husband, she go to him and both of them discharged from hospital. Wow. See, this is very simple because 
I, 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 I here was interested to see why this woman, despite she's able to sit and stand, is not willing to come out of the bed. And it's asking the right questions. And as you yeah. say, having an understanding of all parts of their, yes. of their this life. Is geriatric, this is geriatric medicine. That's its concern about the function of the patient. We've got Dr. Ahmed Fool joining us this afternoon. He is a geriatrician from the Rashid Hospital, Dubai. We're going to be talking next about Alzheimer's disease. Healthy Habits. On Afternoons with Helen Farmer. We're in conversation now with the UAE's very first, he was the very first geriatrician at Rashid Hospital, Dubai. Dr. Ahmed Fool is with us. And we're talking about Alzheimer's disease. This is ahead of an awareness day next week. And after half past, we are speaking to a group here that supports patients and families. But I'd love, Doctor, to get a bit of a medical expert explanation on what Alzheimer's is, what's happening or not happening in the brain? Uh, Alzheimer's disease is um, a brain degenerative disease. Um, uh, uh, actually, all the people know that Alzheimer's disease affects the memory. Uh, however, the memory is one of the functions, uh, the cognitive functions, because all of us has have memory problems. Mm-hmm. All of us put our keys and forget and <laughs> put our eyeglass and forget where it is like that. Walking into rooms and not knowing why I'm there yeah, is why a favorite. Ca- why yeah. I'm to the room. Daily. Yeah, this is, this is normal. Uh, however, the problem with Alzheimer's disease is not only memory. There are other areas of cognition affected. However, also the memory has a specific cr- criterion. We, we, we have something called the working memory. The working memory or the active memory is when I'm in the supermarket and I buy some goods and I'm cal- calculating how much the total. So I'm adding certain numbers. So I add the first number to the second number, I get a number. I have to keep this number in my memory for a while till I add the third number and then the fourth and the, the summation and the end I get the summation. Patient with Alzheimer does not have working memory. Okay. So he cannot calculate and he cannot communicate in conversation because he need to keep the stream of conversation in his mind to mm-hmm. continue talking in the same topic. That's why if you talk to him, you will find him get blocked and cannot continue. Uh, this is the, the most prominent feature in, in, in memory problem in, in Alzheimer. In addition, patient with Alzheimer, all the people observe that he forgets, but he himself does not recognize that he forgets. Even if you ask him, maybe he will deny so very much kind of living in the present. Was, I was going to say this sounds very distressing, but it sounds like it perhaps would be more distressing for those around yes. someone who's suffering. Yes, absolutely. Uh, also, the language gets affected, like the ability of the person to understand the spoken speech. You speak to him, but this, the speech uh, has no meaning in his head, like the dictionary in his head has been erased. His uh, mother tongue language is erased. So when you speak to him, he listen. Like he is listening to foreign language. That's why you would speak to him and you expect that he, is underst- he has understood what you said to him and you expect him to, to obey or, or to do what you want and he is not. Mm-hmm. And you think that he is resisting you. No, he is, he is not understanding. He's not you. capable. Also, he, when he, get, he wants to talk, the ideas escape from his mind and he does not have the words to express his thoughts. So you will say him, say one word, and stop talking and and then, stay. And, then, and then that working memory is then compromised because yeah, and, time elapses and yeah and stay thinking of the word that he need that that he needs to express what he what he want to say so the 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 time he keeps silent is becomes longer mm-hmm. in addition this is language problem uh, the topographic memory if if he used to go to the mosque or the church near his home every day for his life now the 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 way is lost the map is lost, so he can go despite everything is in its place, but he did not recognize that this is the church place and this is the way back to home and he get lost. Also, the distance between him and the objects are disturbed, like when he's driving car, he cannot exactly judge the distance so he can do accidents, especially during parking the car. Mm-hmm. Um, and even in his home, he, maybe he loses the ability to identify where is the bathroom and where is the kitchen. And also the the using of tools like the knife and um, the the fork, even the equipment in the bathroom like the cabinet, he he see it, but when he want to pass motion, he pass it on the floor because the, the, it does not have meaning to him. So his life become very complicated, and he needs somebody to take care of him. Mm-hmm. This is this is what happens in Alzheimer's disease. 
Dr. Ahmed Fool with us this afternoon. Um, we are going to be speaking to a group here raising awareness um, around Alzheimer's in the UAE. Um, I'm curious, Dr. Ahmed, what do we know about causality, risk factors, why someone would get Alzheimer's disease? Yeah, this question was very obscure uh, until um, 10 years back uh, when scientists start to explore why this happens. Uh, in the beginning, they found that there are some proteins, spe- specific proteins deposit in the brain and they claim that these proteins causes Alzheimer. However, they found that these proteins are found in brain of all people who does not have Alzheimer. Ah. So they start to search why, why. Uh, also, there are some genes that uh, if uh, the person have one copy of this gene, he is um, 30% prone to have Alzheimer. But the question, why the 70% does not get it, despite mm-hmm. they have one gene, one mm-hmm. copy. And who have two copies, he has uh, 50% and more uh, uh, susceptibility to, be, to get Alzheimer. Okay, but why the other 50 does not get it? So there are factors which participate, but not no one is 100% responsible. But still, who? what is the secret? What is the driver of the problem? They found that the driver of the problem is brain inflammation. So if you have a gene or you 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 have amyloid and you don't have inflammation, you want to get Alzheimer's disease. But if you have brain inflammation, you will get Alzheimer's disease. Now, what causes inflammation? This is a, a, a big story. Uh, but to make it simple, um, some people, their immune response, the brain, by the way, does not have um, immune system. Like lymphatics, like uh, B cell and T cells that present in the all, all of our body to defend the microbes. But our brain does not have these cells. Mm-hmm. Our brain, when a microbe enters the brain, uh, it creates protein called um, which we in the brain of Alzheimer patient. This amyloid protein, this amyloid protein uh, has antimicrobial activity. It go and surround the microbe and restrain the microbe, preventing him from doing any harm. Uh, before um, yeah, some some years, uh, we believe that the brain is sterile. No, our brain is not sterile at all. It contains viruses, bacteria, and fungi. Even normal people have this. But the problem is when these organisms go into the brain, the 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 the, the, the they incorporate itself in the genome of the cells of the brain, in areas responsible for triggering inflammation. That's why the immune response inside the brain becomes aggravated or strong. And the, there are cells that called astrocytes. These cells are the immune defense of the brain. These cells in, in normal patients go and eat the amyloid, which, is, which engulfs the microbe. Eat the microbe and the amyloid that's around it, which is very good. Mm-hmm. But in Alzheimer patient, these astrocytes become very aggressive and go and eat the weak brain cells also. Dr. Ahmed, we've got a question here from Yaz asking about prevention. Yeah, I'm going to it. Can you explain yeah. a little bit yeah, about I, that? Yeah, I'm coming to it because the, the whole prevention is how to reduce the brain inflammation. Mm-hmm. This is the, the, the way how we do uh, the prevention. Uh, so if you would like me to go into prevention now, I go. We have a minute and a half. Is <laughs> oh, that possible? Only. Okay, fine. <laughs> Quick fire round. Okay. See, we, we in order to reduce inflammation, uh, there are the diet, which is very important. And uh, diet, high fiber diet um, and zero sugar. Oh. <laughs> and uh, especially for people who, who, who has family history of Alzheimer's okay. disease. Um, the high fiber and uh, low carb, uh, medium protein. High fat and uh, fat. fasting. Fasting is very important because of um, autophagy, because fasting helps the brain to eat itself. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, this exercise, exercise found that it can generate new cells in the brain, which was not known before. That the brain, the brain can generate new cells, and the the good news is that these new cells, when it comes out, it comes out in in area of inflammation. So it dies, but exercise, when it creates new cells, it clears inflammation from around the new cells. So it surf- survives. This is the important. Exercise does not mean go for a walk. Exercise should be aerobic and intense and uh, uh, strength exercise also. So aerobic and strengthening exercise, not only simple walking. So fasting for 12 hours minimum, 
to 16 hours per day starting from 8 p.m., three hours before sleep. And this is according to protocol called the Predison Protocol for reversal of Alzheimer. It also reversal. used for, wow. yeah, for, it's also used for prevention of Alzheimer if, if somebody want to prevent himself. Uh, stress reduction is very important. Sleep eight hours every day. Minimum, if you don't sleep six, uh, eight hours in the night, you need to compensate in the afternoon because sleep clears the brain from the amyloid and helps regeneration and the cleaning the brain. But if you don't clean your brain, it will eventually be full by waste and degenerate. Uh, music. Music is important. Uh, listening to the music because they found that in Alzheimer patient, they was uh, believing that the person does not understand the signals and does not register the signals. But no, they found that the patient register but can uh, cannot replay it. Interesting. Yeah. A- any music in particular? Any music the person love. Oh, lovely. When Good. he was in the age of thir- 13 and 25. Okay. So <laughs> Oasis for me. <laughs> yeah. So so this helps the person to replay the music again. Wow. And the replaying the music helped him to replay other information stored in his brain. So it can unlock memories and yes, information. Yes. You ca- they found that after giving 15 minutes of music, you can after this communicate with the patient and he can interact with you. And I guess my follow-up question is about when you can start to look to prevent Alzheimer's disease, Doctor. In an ideal world, I'm sure everyone listening today would be, you know, doing there's something every day. But yeah. what, what would you advise in an, in an optimum situation? Okay. Just uh, supplementing the, this piece of information about relationships. Loneliness is a risk factor for Alzheimer's disease. So mm-hmm. you have uh, connections and friends prevent happening of Alzheimer's disease. Now, when to start to, to predict, to, 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 to take care? Uh, one very important piece of information is Alzheimer starts in the brain 15 to 20 years before it manifests itself. And this is something hidden. Like when somebody gets a heart attack, this does not mean that his heart, these blood vessels get damaged in the same day. No, it happened over years mm-hmm. before till the blood vessels become occluded. And then it's then and that attack is then a manifestation yes. of what's happened before. Yeah, and but in heart disease, we, we now we can check cholesterol, blood pressure, diabetes and they prevent the heart attack. But in Alzheimer, we don't do this till now. We only wait till the patient get Alzheimer and then we give him treatment. And this protocol, the prevention protocol, you need to start it early. Early when this, if somebody has his fa- his parents get Alzheimer, he need to know what day, what time, what age they started to get Alzheimer, okay. and he start to check himself 20, 15 to twenty years before this day. Wow. What he wants to know, he wants to know the burden of inflammation on his brain. There is a battery of, of investigations that we through which we we can know if he has inflammation or no. He need to know his ApoE genome if he have one copy or two copies because the difference is big. I can see Desiree nodding, nodding along. She's she's up to date with all of the <laughs> medical jargon. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> he he need to know his insulin resistance if he have insulin resistance mm-hmm. because insulin resistance causes inf- brain inflammation. We need to fight anything causes brain inflammation. If he has toxins like mercury, toxins affect the brain. With or there are protocols to kill it. This mercury. He need to follow the the advices that I have mentioned, the exercise program and the diet. Anyone that prescribes music and sleep yeah. is a, is a, is a yes, happy time yes, indeed for me, doctor. Yes, yes. <laughs> music and sleep and meditation. Wow. There is one study done on, on for one week meditation. They found that people who meditated their telomere, telomere this is the part of the chromosome responsible for cell division, increased by 40 percent like magic. So he has increased the ability of the cell to regenerate by 40% by one week intense meditation program. Imagine that if you meditate regularly, this means you're protecting your brain. This also gives insight about the stress role in development of Alzheimer's disease. Mm-hmm. If you if you in a continuous stress, this means you are producing high levels of cortisone and cortisone causes brain atrophy. So you need to Fight by sleeping well, meditating, listening to the music, and have friends and families. In addition to identify this, this is the role of the, the physician, identifying the 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 inflammation, the the roots of inflammation, why inflammations happen, and 
after that, how, to, uh, how I'm going to treat this inflammation mm-hmm. according to the protocol of prednisone. I feel like conversations like this are so, so useful because it's... So-